Young people today are faced with so many problems, especially peer pressure. And the hardest word that young people have to say today is the little word, no. Do you say no when the peer pressure comes, when the hormones begin to rise, when the excitement is there? Yes, we're all tempted. But there's no temptation taken you but what everybody else has had. Because the moment you're tempted, God provides a way to escape. There is a way out. He provides it. But you have to make the decision to go that way. And when you make that decision, the Holy Spirit is there to help you and give you strength and courage. What about you? Do you live a disciplined life? Do you live an organized life? Have you got your life organized and disciplined to the point that you can say no to those things that you know that are hurting your body? You see, the Bible teaches that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God doesn't live in a church building. God lives in you. And a, and a group of us called the church and assembly make up the church. But the real temple of God is your body. And yet you harm your body by the way you treat it. Now the Bible teaches that sex is not a sin. God gave it. It's a gift from God. It's the wrong use of sex that's the sin. God gave you the ability to make love, but within the bonds of matrimony, not outside. Adultery is wrong. That's when two people who are married and then fornication, unmarried people. With Christ and with the Holy Spirit giving you supernatural power, you can say no. But I'll tell you, it's tough. But the marks of a Christian are self-control and self-discipline. Paul wrote to Timothy and said, keep thyself pure. He said, flee, flee youthful lust, run. When that temptation comes, run. He also said, but I keep my own body under and I bring it into subjection. What about you? Do you do that? Joseph did, and God greatly used and blessed Joseph. And he'll use and bless you if you'll say no. In spite of our sins, in spite of our bad thing, God loves us. And that word love is a love far beyond human love. Agape love, God's love, supernatural love, love beyond anything that you have ever known. God loves you. Yes, you can have pleasure in sin. You can have a good time in getting drunk on drugs at a sex orgy. You can have pleasure, but it's short. It's for a season. It's soon gone. He that loveth pleasure is a poor man, said the writer of Proverbs. Paul wrote to Timothy and said, But he that liveth in pleasure is dead. She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she lives. You're living physically, but dead spiritually. Your heart is dead toward God. You can be a dead man. The Bible says in 2 Timothy, Paul wrote, we're lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Pleasure are the things that appeal to our flesh and our lust. Joy is something else. It runs deep. And no matter what the weather, what the climate, what the troubles, what the difficulties are, there's a joy because the joy is produced by the Holy Spirit supernaturally in you so that the whole world can fall in on you and there's a joy that's always there. He says when you have suffering for Jesus' sake and somebody makes fun of you at school, leap for joy. Be joyful about it. You're doing it for Jesus' sake. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Is your name written in heaven? If it is, rejoice. If it's not, you better weep until you do find Christ. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. You can have Christ's joy. Do you have his joy? 
Then there's Jesus. The Bible says, tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. The devil took him into the wilderness and tempted him three times. And Jesus was hungry. He hadn't eaten 40 days and 40 nights. He was tired. He was thirsty. Yes, but you said he was God. He was different. Oh, no. He had divested himself of all those supernatural powers at that moment. He met the devil just like you do as a man. And the devil said, if you're the son of God, command these stones and turn them into bread. You can feed the whole world. There'll be no hunger in the world. You can solve all the social problems in the world right now, Jesus. You do that. And did you know that Jesus never argued with him? He never debated him. All he did was quote scripture. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And then the second temptation came when he said, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. You see, the devil had said, jump out, make a big spectacle, and people will believe. You don't have to go to the cross. You don't have to die on the cross as you're planning to do to save the world. You can do it, and they'll all believe when they see the angels catching you in midair. But Jesus said, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And then the third temptation was, all these things will I give you if you'll fall down and worship me. He said, look at the world, all the world, all the oil, all the gold, all the power in the world is yours. And Jesus didn't dispute with him that he didn't have the power to offer it because he's called the God of this world, the prince and power there, the prince of this world. The devil has tremendous power, tremendous authority, and tremendous wealth. And he can offer you everything there is if you just worship him a little bit. Just nod your head and say, all right, devil, I'll go with you a little way anyway. Jesus didn't do that. He said, get behind me, Satan. It's written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So the Bible says after those three temptations, the devil left him and the angels came and helped him. Note those three things. Jesus quoted scripture. He was filled with the Spirit. He was in the will of God. Are you willing to say tonight no to the temptations of the devil and yes to the call of Christ? 